Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. First question today is, do we have any listeners from New York? I've just recently been reading about the blackout in New York. I think it was on Saturday. It got me thinking, did this actually stop people entering hotel rooms due to electronic key cards and things like that not working? And were you one of those people? And it also got me thinking how, in one hand, we're excited about building smart cities, but when we have a power outage, we lose everything. And there doesn't seem to be any contingency plans for when it happens, because we all just take it for granted that we'll always have that power that we need. And then if I put my tinfoil hat on, I I then start thinking, does that mean that we're going to see an increase attacks on power grids? And and what will it mean for all those things that we take for granted? Sorry, I'm irresponsibly thinking out loud without my filter. If you were in New York over the weekend, I'd love to hear about the kind of experiences you had during the blackout and any observations that you had. So please, if you were there, email me now, techblogwriter at outlook.com. And if you go to my website, techblogwriter.co.uk, scroll to the bottom, you'll find all the social channels if you'd prefer just to DM me on one of those because, hey, nobody emails anymore. At least that's what my son keeps telling me. But he's got a shock waiting for him when he enters the workplace. But of course, there's a lot of people listening in countries that are going a little bit crazy over Amazon Prime Day, which over two days, we get a mini Black Friday kind of thing with lots of bargains where we can fill our virtual baskets of things that we want, but not necessarily need. And one of the things I did notice was the the Amazon Prime membership, which I think it was whether well, it was a $20 or £20 discount if you if you sign up today. And I thought, is this where we're at now? Where during a sale, we're actually purchasing nothing but just access to a service that gives us quick delivery of things. That is the instant gratification of everything, isn't it? It really is. But hey, I'm rambling now. We've got a show to do. Sorry about that. If you have picked up any bargains, let me know. If you're resisting from buying any bargains, also let me know and tell me why you're not going in there and filling your house with surveillance equipment. <laughs> you know where you know how to find me, so please let me know. But I'm rambling. I got a little bit carried away there, didn't I? So on with today's show. Now, regular listeners will remember that I spoke to Slice Labs CTO Stu Baserman on here a few months ago. We had a great conversation. I've recently discovered on my tech timelines that he's hired a new head of cyber in Jocelyn Getson. Now, Jocelyn has keen interest in the on-demand space and improving the customer experience across all touch points in the insurance industry. And with her expertise in cyber insurance, she understands the pain points that specifically SMBs face when it comes to IT infrastructure and how insurance can help fold in a layer of security that's so desperately needed at the onset of any small business strategy now. So I felt compelled to find out more and invited her on the show today to speak about cyber-related topics, her vision for what the future of insurance looks like, and how technology is increasingly playing a crucial role across the industry. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Texas so we can speak with Jocelyn Getson. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Jocelyn. Can you tell the listeners a little more about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. And thank you, Neil. I've uh, been a longtime listener and absolutely appreciate you having me on the show today. So I, as you said, Jocelyn Getson, and I am head of uh, cyber at Slice Labs. And role is obviously very focused around our small business uh, cyber product. And our, our, all of our products are actually built on our ICS platform, which is a found, fantastic foundation for creating products that are adaptable, flexible, and obviously on demand. So my role is very much focused around the strategy of our small, medium-sized business cyber product, working directly with our amazing partners, AXA XL, we have a very collaborative, uh, close relationship and just constantly focused on where we are today, where we should be and uh, what's next in the market. Now, before inviting you on today, I must admit I did a little bit of research. I'd love to say I had a team of researchers, but in fact it was just me. And I quickly learned that you've got a, quite a keen interest on the on-demand space and improving customer experience across all touch points in insurance. So this got me thinking, I mean, what's the story behind that interest and what is it that excites you about this space? 
Yes. No, I appreciate that. And um, no, I absolutely do. And luckily, everyone at Slice does as well. So, I mean, to, to us it's and to, and to myself, it's really about meeting customers where they are, no matter what they're doing, and giving them the tools and services that they need in an easy, frictionless manner. And, you know, it's it's funny, I always uh, equate, we look at different industries, and I, and I don't see any reason that insurance should be any different than experiences you're having in other spaces. Because the truth is, customers are not compartmentalizing, like, this is insurance, this should be how it looks and feels, or, you know, this is how I'm streaming my movies, and this is how it should be. I mean, ultimately, they want to have similar experiences, no matter what they're doing, because that's the easiest for them. And, and that should be our goal. So, uh, you know, when you're ordering your Uber, your Lyft, or streaming your, you know, streaming music on Spotify, using Netflix, and then you move to insurance, it shouldn't feel like, you know, the record stopped. And now all of a sudden, <laughs> there's friction and complication. Because the reality is, behind Netflix, there's a lot of things happening. And I don't think there's a customer out there who thinks what Lyft and Uber are accomplishing is easy. It's not. All of it's very complicated, but why should the surface and the delivery of it feel that way too? And so really at Slice, we're committed to, to making that, that same look and feel for customers uh, for a fairly complicated product, which insurance is. Um, and what I'm finding now working so closely now with small, the small, medium-sized business market is that they require just as much flexibility uh, and absolutely the on-demand component as as any customer, any consumer does as well. So, you know, these are businesses that are very busy and tied up uh, with other things they're working on. And so, again, we're kind of all getting back to, like, how can we make things not only engaging, but also useful and a similar experience to what they're having anywhere else in their in their business? I completely agree with what you're saying there. And we do expect the same experience where we go, everywhere we go. And every business is chasing those same digital experiences and trying to provide them. And if you look under the hood, like you said, under Netflix, it's a hell of a lot more complex than <laughs> most people realize. They might have it harder than we do, Neil. I think you <laughs> should. Right? A lot, it's a lot going on. Yep. Absolutely. So from your perspective then, what are some uh, pain points that SMB is facing, especially when it comes to IT infrastructure? And how can insurance help fold in a layer of security that's needed at the onset of sm a small business strategy? And also finally, how is slightly tackling these pain points head on wow well yeah i mean i think overall uh it, pulling away even just from cyber i think small medium-sized businesses are tasked with having very similar if not the same requirements as a large enterprise company does in terms of you know human resources it uh accounting you know payroll there's there's a lot of different departments that they're responsible for and when especially if you're starting a business or even you know if you want to be a lean mean efficient company you want to keep you know those those departments maybe to a minimum and so that usually results in outsourcing um and what i find with the in uh in regards to cyber is a lot of the times what's lacking the most and and where the challenge is is creating awareness um, for cybersecurity as a whole. So you have a mentality sometimes uh, with these smaller businesses that they think, I'm not a target. You know, who am I? What do I have that's valuable? They, I'm not what any hacker is going to be focused on. Um, but the reality is a lot of the large cyber attacks that we have seen, the household name brands that have been targeted, are typically, uh, the entry point is a small, medium-sized business. They are uh, sometimes in contract with larger companies and therefore have login credentials and other things that are very valuable uh, to, to hackers and cyber criminals. And so um, I think creating awareness around the fact that, yes, you, you are at risk, um, and that 60% of small, medium-sized businesses actually go out of business after an attack. Uh, so that's, that's an alarming number. And um, a lot of the times there are very, very easy, low-hanging fruit measures that uh, these businesses can take to minimize themselves as a target. Very simple things. I mean, whether it's a multi-factor authentication, you know, basically, you know, two, two parts to putting in your password, antivirus, backups. I mean, there's there's a not even a very long list just of, of certain things that they could do that automatically reduces their the size of their target. And so when it comes to cyber insurance, uh, to your point, Neil, it absolutely is just one layer of the security. Uh, and in fact, we actually 
uh, sometimes refer to it, you know, really as like the Swiss cheese approach, which is that every layer does have gaps in it, right? So you can have cybersecurity as a layer. It's, it's definitely not, you know, d making some changes to your IT infrastructure is not going to make you not a target. And it's, it's, it is an if not when scenario. Um, and so you absolutely have to have some cybersecurity as one layer. Then incident response, if something was to happen, how are we going to respond to that? And another layer being a cyber insurance. So the hope is that all of these components really beautifully lay upon each other so that you actually don't have any gaps or um, and that you are taken care of in case something was to happen. So it's not completely preventable. No cyber attack is completely preventable. You cannot eliminate yourself as a target. So you have to, therefore, put these layers in place. Um, so Slice is actually, we, we take a few different approaches to how we kind of combat that problem. We definitely are constantly focused on how we can educate the small, medium-sized business market, uh, create that awareness. But we also try to make everything um, not overwhelming, you know, really kind of take some of the fear factor out of just signing up or looking for a policy. So, you know, we do things like we have eight, only eight questions, very simple questions. We have um, a policy that's I think it takes five minutes to read. It's a very short policy, very clear to the point. Uh, we've put actually, uh, we've made this a subscription product so that it, it has an inherent flexibility to it where, you know, small businesses who might be concerned about cost or seasonal businesses have some flexibility there. Um, you know, and I think also just making some, uh, giving some options to, to small businesses. Uh, a lot of the time when they are looking for cyber insurance, it might not be because they're actually looking for cyber insurance. They're, they're required to have it for a contract or for a bank loan or for or by an investor. So that's usually sometimes the first part of their journey is just uh, being asked to have it. And so for that uh, purpose, we did create a policy that has flexible limits and retentions. So if one month they're going after a contract and need to increase that, um, amount or they've decided uh, their their risk is lower, they can they can reduce that amount or they've made some major investments in in their infrastructure. So they can play around with that. And that's something that we we do give them those options depending on their their revenue and their size. So um, I think that's really our approach is always just to kind of create an inherent flexibility in all of our products so customers can create what's needed for them and personalize. And as someone that's working right in the heart of this space, I suspect you've seen it all. You've heard one too many myths and over the years you've seen good examples and bad examples. But what are the good and bad examples of cyber insurance that you've seen and uh, encountered over the last few years? So I'm going to name names. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, I, just, <laughs> no, I, mean I, I honestly don't track it in terms of like good and bad. And yeah. I think ultimately, though, you're you're right, though. I mean, ultimately, though, a bad policy is one that somebody thought they were covered for something that they weren't. So to me, a, a bad policy or a policy that uh, is not clear is probably um, a, a huge weakness, you know, because it, it, there's nothing worse than a customer feeling like you've added a gotcha or, um, you know, that, oh, I thought this was this and it's not. So, so again, it, it, I'm going to kind of keep coming back to a little bit of the education and the awareness. Um, but also, I do think uh, it's not a one size fits all for small uh, businesses. So you can't just take an enterprise policy and make it a small business policy. So when you're building, um, and I'm doing air quotes, but when you're building a good, you know, policy, to me, it it does, it needs to be simple, it needs to be very flexible, it needs to be very easy to understand. And customers need to be able to file a claim um, as, as quickly as possible. Um, so in the small business space, um, I think when at time of claim is a great example. There are uh, cases where if, if, if a small business doesn't have an IT person or they're not that tech savvy themselves, they might not be aware if they're having an actual cyber event or if it was just a hardware or software issue. So sometimes the triage uh, is different. So I think when looking at these policies, it is um, evaluating uh, to make sure that the small business has the tools that they need uh, to understand it, to uh, build what they need for their particular business, and then, of course, to have clarity at time of claim. And what is your vision for what the future of insurance looks like? So I'm quite curious about that and why technology and the kind of role that that, that well, the kind of crucial role that that's going to play in the industry. 
Sure. Um, well, I love an analogy. Um, and I actually, for this, um, I, I actually look a lot uh, the, it, to the retail space. Um, so I have worked in the past with um, IoT manufacturers, retailers, um, you know, so I have a, a, a you know, watch that, that uh, evolution in the retail space from brick and mortar all the way to now, obviously, e-commerce and, and, and that balance. And I, and I see really the same thing for insurance. In fact, I think we're probably just a few years behind where retail is um, and it can quickly, uh, it's quickly changing. But I think essentially retail, you had your brick and mortar environment. A customer would have to go in, they go into their local store, have an educated you know, retail sales associate help them through that selling process, answer questions. Uh, then when the internet, you know, came along, it really started with just researching. And uh, the first part of the journey became a very, very research heavy uh, online search, uh, and then still going into store for acquisition. And now, you know, it, it's, there's obviously the shift to e-commerce, uh, still a lot of transactions happening in store, uh, but the shift to e-commerce is there as well. And so what's in any retailer's best interest is to have a, a nice balance of both, because there's absolutely... Uh, products that you maybe still want to go into the store and buy. And then there's going to be products that you just need to acquire and you need to get, and they, they serve an immediate purpose. And so I think with insurance, it's going to be very similar. Um, digital delivery of insurance products is, is, is nothing other than that. I mean, it's just an, another way to acquire it in some manners. And in some contexts, it's the, the most eff efficient, effective way to to get that policy. Um, and so small businesses in particular are a great fit for that. Uh, they don't have a ton of time. They do get overwhelmed. They already have in their mind probably 47 other insurance policies they need to buy or learn about or someone's told them about. And I think just making that very simple and taking the onus off of them um, has been our goal. So I think the future of insurance is going to be a nice balance of digital delivery and um, and still the traditional method of buying policies. And I'm curious, is there anything that particularly excites you about this space and the kind of opportunities that could unravel ahead? The more innovative products that are put to market, uh, the more just advancements that we see in insurance and regulation. I mean, it's just going to benefit everybody. So not better, we all do. And getting customers to trust and understand insurance providers and insurance policies is, is critical. So it's, it's exciting to me that there are more people out there, um, you know, uh, and insurance companies working to get cool new products out there. And, and not everyone's going to take off right away, right? But it's a matter of just getting out and trying and seeing what works. Um, and I think, you know, at Slice, we, we build all of our products on our insurance platform, like I said earlier. And I think that's it's a fantastic, um, you know, opportunity to really launch some cool products quickly. And I think that ultimately with the small business market building, the, to me, I get excited about the thought of building kind of ecosystems around the insurance. I think, uh, you know, bringing a hybrid of the education of other tools um, and services that might help them mitigate and reduce their risk exposure or bringing them their flexible products i think many people listening will not automatically associate ai machine learning behavioral psychology and real-time personalization with the insurance industry so can you tell me a little bit more about how slice leverages all those areas to provide this unique offering that you're doing at the moment yes absolutely so gathering data is is fantastic i mean it's amazing the amount of data we have access to um every policy sold every claim made um, and even customer behavior in general so what machine learning and ai enables us to do is to aggregate all of that data and make it actionable which is which is really the critical component there right it's it's gathering data for the sake of gathering data is is, um, is really not valuable. And so uh, you can't just have individuals analyzing each line of it. So feeding it into um, AI machine learning is really what's gonna allow us then to action upon it. And once we've done that, once we've analyzed the data, we actually do draw a, a, a hypothesis from that information, various hypotheses, depending on what we're studying. Um, and that's where behavioral science can come in. So we can actually take those hy the hypothesis we have um, that we've drawn from machine learning and combine it with what we know about human behavior. Uh, at Slice, we actually do partner with Max Fazerman, who's um, 
who works for Harvard Business School, and he's a behavioral psychologist. Uh, and he's really accelerated what we know about human behavior. So we've been able to create processes based on this information, this combination of machine learning, AI, and behavioral science, um, and actually you know, help people to answer questions honestly and transparently uh, when they're applying for their insurance and also when they're making their claims. Uh, so, because the reality is nobody wins when insurance claims are inflated, you know, premiums go up, customers end up paying more. Um, so with our partners, we're really looking to always deliver innovative insurance products to people who need these products at an affordable rate. And we're doing that by using tools like AI, machine learning, and behavioral psychology. Fantastic. Now, Slice Labs CTO Stu Baseman joined me on this tech podcast back in May, I think it was. So have you had any big announcements since his appearance, or is there anything else that you can share with me today about the kind of work that you're doing? Well, the beauty of our ICS platform, um, the foundation of our products, is that it does enable us to kind of build these great on-demand products quickly. Uh, so there are always some cool things happening over at Slice. But for right now, I have to say stay tuned. Oh, you've left us I with know, a teaser. I, I, yeah, there's some cool stuff coming, but I have to say stay tuned. Yep. <laughs> well, before I do let you go, could I just ask that you remind the listeners of where they can find you guys online and maybe even contact a member of your team if they are left with any questions that don't involve the teasers that you left, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So our website um, is, is the fastest way to get some information, and that is slice.is or slice.is. Um, and then if you want to email myself or anyone on the team, the best way to do that is to go to info or email through info at slice.is. Excellent. Well, it's been a huge honor to have you on the show today. You started the podcast saying that you were a long time listener. So I suspect it might feel a little weird being on the other side of things, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And hopefully we'll get you back on in a few months and we'll talk about those other topics that you alluded to a few moments ago. But thanks for coming on today, Jocelyn. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Neil. It. Really appreciate it. Like I said a few moments ago, many people listening will not think of artificial intelligence, machine learning, behavioral psychology, and real-time personalization when they're thinking about the insurance industry. So I was absolutely fascinated about hearing more about this and how InsureTech is really taking off at the moment. I think it's great to hear as well more about how Slice is leveraging these areas to provide a completely unique offering. But as always, I'll throw the virtual microphone over to you. If you work in insurance or or you're seeing the rise of insure tech or you've got any reservations about it, whatever your thoughts, please don't sit there in silence or walking down the street ranting away. <laughs> Rant to me. That's what I'm here for. Please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. If you'd like to come on the show, again, email me. And if you'd like to work with me, go to my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. And you can start a conversation directly with yours truly. But I'm afraid we're out of time. I will return again tomorrow. Don't worry. I, <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. But before I do go, just a genuine warm thank you from me for tuning into this podcast day after day. You're the reason it works and you're the reason why I sit in this room on my own chatting away into a microphone. So thank you. So thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.